आर एक्शन मैटर मोर देन आर वुड्स तो हम कितना भी बोल ले कितना भी सोच ले कि यार मुझे ये काम करना है लेकिन जब तक हम वो काम करेंगे नहीं हमें उसका एंड रिजल्ट नहीं मिलेगा सो इट इज़ द टाइम टू पुट योर थॉट्स इन टू योर एक्शन सो लेट्स स्टॉप थिंकिंग एंड स्टार्ट स्टडिंग हाय एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू जेंटल जेंट टू वी आर हेयर विद द न्यू वीडियो एंड द टॉपिक वेरी फ्रेल मिलो ब्लास्टमा सो बिफोर वी बिगिन आई वॉन्ट यू टू क्विकली सब्सक्राइब टू जेंटल जेंट इफ यू हैव नॉट डन दिल नाउ ऑल्सो हिट ऑन द वेल आई कैन सो दैट यू मे नोटिफाइड अबाउट यू न्यू वीडियोज नोमिलो ब्लास्टमाज आर ओडोंटो जेनिक ट्यूमर्स ओडोंटो मीस टू एंड जेनिक मीस फॉर्मिंग टू फॉर्मिंग टिश्यू से बने इसलिए को बोलते हैं अटॉन्टोजेनिक ट्यूमर्स नाउ देयर आर थ्री टाइप्स फर्स्ट टाइप इज नोन एज कन्वेंशनल सॉलिड और मल्टीसिस्टिक टाइप सेकंड इज नोन एज यूनिसिस्टिक टाइप वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस दीस टू टाइप्स इन द प्रीवियस वीडियोस द लिंक्स फॉर व्हिच यू कैन फाइंड इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स बिलो इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द पेरिफेरल टाइप और एक्स्ट्रा ऑशियस टाइप व्हिच कॉन्स्टिट्यूट्स अबाउट 1% ऑफ ऑल द एमिलोब्लास्टोमास अ पेरिफेरल का मतलब क्या है पेरिफेरल मतलब बाहर पड़ा है बाहर कहां जिनजाइवा में सो दिस ट्यूमर फॉर्म्स इन द जिनजाइवा सो यू हैव टू रिमेंबर द वेयर एवर यू सी द वर्ड पेरिफेरल along with the lesion that means it is extra osseous extra means outside osseous means bone bone ke bahar pada hai kahan pada hai in the soft tissues and wherever you see the word central along with the lesion or along with the tumor that means it is intra osseous intra means inside osseous means bone bone ke andar pada hai so peripheral or extra osseous ameloblastoma is the third growth pattern and it is present in the soft tissues so here you get your viva question what is other name for peripheral ameloblastoma it is also known as extra osseous ameloblastoma now why it is considered a separate type because it has limited tendency to recur as solid ameloblastoma has more tendency to recur it can recur again and again peripheral ameloblastoma shows less recurrence second point is it lacks invasiveness जैसे हमारा सॉलिड अमिलोब्लास्टोमा है वो बोन के अंदर इन्वेट कर जाता है इट कैन इन्फिल्ट्रेट इन टू द बोन द पेरिफ्रल अमिलोब्लास्टोमा विल नॉट इन्वेट इट लैक्स द इन्वेजिवनेस सो बिकॉज ऑफ दीज टू रीजन दैट इज लिमिटेड टेंडेंसी टू रेकर एंड इट लैक्स इन्वेजिवनेस इट इज रिकोगनाइज एज अ सेपरेट टाइप दैट इज पेरिफ्रल अमिलोब्लास्टोमा और एक्स्ट्रा ऑशियस अमिलोब्लास्टोमा Now if we talk about the origin, we already know it is from it is in the periphery. That is, it is in the gingiva. So, कहाँ से बनना चाहिए? Gingiva से ही बनना चाहिए. So, from the basal cell layer of the gingival epithelium, they can proliferate and can give rise to the ameloblastoma in the connective tissue of the gingiva. So, that can be the first origin. Second is from the remnants of dental amina. In the first year dental histology, we read that the dental amina remnants may be present in the connective tissue of the gingiva. So, these remnants they can proliferate and can give rise to peripheral ameloblastoma. So those are the two origins first is the basal cell of the surface epithelium second is the remnants of dental amina now we come to the clinical features this tumor occurs over a wide age range 23 to 82 years mostly seen in the middle age mean or average age is 52.1 years now for solid ameloblastomas mean age is 33 years so we can say that peripheral ameloblastomas occur in little older population males are affected slightly more than females and if we talk about the site mandible is affected more than maxilla and that too the mandibular premolar and the molar region so the gingiva over this region is affected more and this is the most common site now clinically it can present as a painless lesion so it can be present over the gingiva like this as a painless lesion which can be sessile or pedunculated sessile means the lesion may be directly present over the gingiva like this or it may be pedunculated that means it is attached to the gingiva with the help of a stalk or with the help of a peduncle ek dandi se gingiva se juda hua so it can be sessile or it can be pedunculated and it is present as a nodule over the gingiva now the size of this nodule may be 3 mm to 2 cm so that can be the size usually it is less than 1.5 cm ab clinically gingiva ke upar koi bhi tumor banega wo iske jaisa hi dikhega so clinically it can resemble fibroma pyogenic granuloma but only on histopath we can identify it as ameloblastoma when we'll see the ameloblastomatous epithelium now coming to radiographic features are ya ye to peripheral tumor hai radiograph pe hame kuch dikhega kya so this tumor can cause the superficial erosion of the bone superficial surface pe bone ko erode kar sakta hai so it can cause the erosion of the bone superficial erosion of the bone and it can look something like this and this is called cupping or saucerization saucer ya cup ki tarah ye hame dikh sakta hai and it is called cupping or saucerization so you have to remember on radiograph peripheral ameloblastoma can cause superficial erosion of bone now talking about the histopath features again we have to remember it is peripheral tumor so we'll see the overlying gingival epithelium that is stratified squamous epithelium we'll see the basal cells we'll see the overlying layers that is spinal cell layer and the other layers and below that in the connective tissue of the gingiva we can see the islands of the odontogenic epithelium that is like this 
or it may be present in the form of long strands interconnected strands like this so islands of ameloblastomatous epithelium in the lamina propria underneath the surface epithelium now if it is present in the form of islands we will see the peripheral tall columnar ameloblast like cells like this which will have hyperchromatic nuclei that is dark staining nuclei reverse polarity of the nuclei that is nuclei are placed away from the basement membrane and the palisading arrangement of the nuclei and the central cells will be loosely placed stellate reticulum like cells so this will remember the follicular pattern of the solid ameloblastoma if you remember the histopath patterns of the solid ameloblastoma there can be six patterns out of which one is follicular so it can look similar to the follicular pattern also if it is present in the form of long strands interconnecting strands where we can see ameloblast like cells like this and in between them we can see stellate reticulum like cells so this is called the plexiform pattern so we can see these two patterns along with acanthomatous patterns that is where we can see keratinization in the central cells squamous metaplasia and keratinization so plexiform and follicular patterns are the more common in peripheral ameloblastoma which are seen in the connective tissue of the gingiva now sometimes we can see connection of the tumor cells with the overlying basal layer of the cells basal layer se bana hai so sometimes we can see a tumor island which is connected to the overlying basal cells of the overlying epithelium like this so that can be seen in about 50% of the cases so that is the histopathology of peripheral ameloblastoma so we'll see overlying epithelium and we can see follicular or plexiform patterns in the connective tissue beneath that now talking about the differential diagnosis two lesions or two tumors which we should differentiate are peripheral odontogenic fibroma and basal cell carcinoma now peripheral odontogenic fibroma as the word says fibroma so it is from the connective tissue is a tumor of connective tissue and odontogenic connective tissue or odontogenic mesenchyme so in this we will see connective tissue tumor and along with that we can see small odontogenic islands or they can be large but the cells of these in these islands will be like odontogenic epithelium like this whereas if we talk about the ameloblastoma that is peripheral ameloblastoma it is arising from odontogenic epithelium ameloblastoma so it is arising from odontogenic epithelium so in this the epithelial component is the tumor component so here we'll see proper islands of epithelial cells where we'll see columnar cells in which the nuclei will show reverse polarity that is they are present away from the basement membrane so this feature helps us in differentiating peripheral ameloblastoma from peripheral odontogenic fibroma that is the lack of peripheral columnar cells with reverse polarity of nuclei is seen in peripheral odontogenic fibroma ye feature nahi hota hai this feature is present in ameloblastoma second thing which can help us is the presence of dysplastic dentin and cementum because it is a, it is arising from mesenchyme connective tissue so here we sometimes we can see formation of dysplastic dentin or cementum like areas in the peripheral odontogenic fibroma whereas this is not seen in amelo peripheral ameloblastoma so that is how we differentiate peripheral ameloblastoma from per per peripheral odontogenic fibroma now if we talk about the basal cell carcinoma it is carcinoma that means it is a malignant tumor of the basal cells epi basal epithelial cells of the sur uh, skin so in this we can see the islands again in this tumor but all the cells in these islands they look similar to the basal cells which are called basaloid cells basal cell like cells so they will have hyperchromatic nuclei like this So again, if we see here, how we can we differentiate peripheral ameloblastoma from the basal cell carcinoma? Is this that in basal cell carcinoma again we will not see this feature that is reverse polarity of nuclei. The peripheral columnar cells with reverse polarity of nuclei will be seen only in the peripheral ameloblastoma and not in the basal cell carcinoma. So that is how we can differentiate these two. So th those are the two differential diagnoses. Histopath. Now talking about the treatment because of its different clinical behavior, that is, it lacks persistent invasiveness in. नहीं करता है एंड ऑल्सो इट हैज लिमिटेड टेंडेंसी टू रेकर एज कम्पेयर टू द सॉलिड अमिलोप्लास्टोमा लोकल सर्जिकल एक्सीजन कैन बी डन बट ऑल दो लोकल रेकरेंसेज हैज बी नोटेड इन फिफ्टी टू ट्वेंटी परसेंट ऑफ द केसेज बट फॉर द लोकल एक्सीजन ऑफ ऑफ दिस रेकरेंट ट्यूमर विल ऑलमोस्ट ऑलवेज रिजल्ट इन द क्योर बट फॉलो ऑफ इज ऑलवेज अ गुड चॉइस सो दैट इज ऑल फॉर पेरिफ्रल अमिलोप्लास्टोमा Let's quickly summarize. So this is the third growth pattern of ameloblastoma after the first conventional solid or multicystic type and the second unicystic type. It is considered a separate type because it has limited tendency to recur and it lacks invasiveness as compared to the solid type. Now its origin can be from the basal cell of the surface epithelium or from the 
remnants of dental lamina. Then it's seen in older population as compared to solid ameloblastoma and it is seen in the mandibular molar premolar region. Gingiva is the most common site. It presents as nodules on gingiva. Radiographically, it can cause superficial erosion of the bone which can be called as saucerization or the cupping. Then histopathologically, we can, it can look similar to the conventional solid or multicystic ameloblastoma where we can see plexiform or follicular pattern of the ameloblastomatous epithelium. But along with that, we can see the overlying epithelium of the soft tissues of, or the gingiva. Treatment, local surgical excision is the treatment. So that is all for peripheral ameloblastoma or extra osseous ameloblastoma. If you really like the video, do give a thumbs up. Keep following dentals and keep learning, keep studying and good luck for your exams. So see you in the next video. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.